Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let me start by saying we have a new member of our Senate leadership team. Senator Wicker has been elected chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee and will be uh, speaking here uh, in a few moments. I've been uh, very disturbed about the, the way the president has proceeded in the wake of the election, whether it was his intervention on a net neutrality, his um, apparent decision to move ahead on immigration uh, with executive orders, the rather ridiculous uh, agreement with the Chinese under which they basically have to do nothing uh, for the next 16 years uh, while we're losing jobs in this country as a result of EPA's overregulation. I had maybe naively hoped the president would uh, look at the results of the election and decide to come to this political center and do some business with us. I still hope he does at some point, uh, but the early signs are not good. Let me tell you who did get the message, and that was Senate Democrats. I think they got the message on the Keystone Pipeline, and I think that's why you've seen uh, the current Democratic majority in the Senate have an epiphany and decide to allow a vote they've been blocking uh, for literally years. Our leader on the Keystone Pipeline from the beginning uh, to the present has been Senator Hoven, uh, the senior senator from North Dakota. And I want to call on Senator Hoven to give you his thoughts about going forward on uh, Keystone Pipeline, which it looks like we'll be able to do in both the House first and then the Senate uh, uh, next week. John. Thank you, Leader. Uh, appreciate it. Just take a minute to talk about the game plan on the uh, Keystone XL pipeline approval bill. As you know, we have a bipartisan uh, bill, and we've worked out uh, unanimous consent for a vote uh, first in the House. That House vote will be uh, tomorrow, Friday, and then we'll vote on it in the Senate on Tuesday. And this is a bill that it's bipartisan, but it's got all 45 senators on board. So this is an issue that we've been pushing for quite some time and uh, that we believe that there's very strong support for. Uh, it's about jobs. It's about energy. Uh, it's about, you know, building the right kind of energy plan for this country, which is important for national security as well. And uh, the American public overwhelmingly supports it. So we've been working to get a vote for some time on this bill. Now, the, clearly the House will pass it overwhelmingly tomorrow. But then we'll vote on it Tuesday. We've got all 45 Republicans on board. Matter of fact, all 45 Republicans are co-sponsors of this legislation. So we need 15 Democrats. We'll see what happens on Tuesday. We hope to have 60 votes. We'll see. But the point I want to make is this. All along, we anticipated that we'll win on this issue because the American public wants Keystone XL approved. So in the new Congress, if we don't get 60 votes on Tuesday, in the new Congress, we will have 60 votes. And again, if you just go through the election results, not only did the American people speak, but when you look at the candidates, we have, uh, you know, 60 votes for the bill. Then it's up to the president. Uh, you've seen his comments. Uh, uh, one of his spokespeople that's traveling with him in Asia said that, uh, that uh, he wasn't fond of the bill. And, Sounds like he may veto it, but if he vetoes it, uh, then we'll have the ability to bring it back and either attach it to broader energy legislation or maybe an appropriations measure that we think he won't veto. Again, this is about what's good for the American people. And so I think we've got a good plan to advance Keystone, and I want to thank uh, not only our leader, but our whole caucus for getting on board and getting behind this important legislation. Thanks, Leader. We're very excited with the new majority that will be sworn in in January to do important things on behalf of the American people and to get Americans back to work again. Uh, and the Keystone XL pipeline, as you heard from Senator Hoven, has been something he's been fighting for and we've been advocating for for at least the last couple of years. Something would add, according to the Secretary of State, uh, about 42,000 jobs. Uh, the kind of thing that we ought to have been do doing years ago, but we're grateful to have the chance to vote for that on Tuesday. But given the opportunity we have, and I think a, uh, 
a emerging bipartisan consensus that the American people really are more interested in us getting to work again, solving problems on a bipartisan basis that they have to live with day in and day out. I can't think of anything more discouraging that the President of the United States could do than what uh, Senator McConnell mentioned, and that, that is threatened to issue this executive amnesty order, which disregards the law and the balance of powers in the Constitution. But think about it. If you are someone who's tried to play by the rules and immigrate to this country legally, we naturalize almost a million people a year. We are a nation of legal immigrants. How unfair, how much more unfair could it be for the president to issue this order and essentially bump all of these new folks ahead of those who've been waiting patiently and trying to play by the rules and doing it the right way. I hope the president will heed um, the, the, the request of people like Senator Angus King, who said he hopes he delays this. I hope he delays it uh, permanently. But at least I hope the president would give us an adequate time to be able to work together to try to begin to uh, build a bipartisan consensus on repairing our broken immigration system. But if he does that, it's going to make it much harder, uh, not easier. I want to start by uh, thanking uh, my colleagues in the Senate for the opportunity to serve with this leadership team again as conference chair. And um, I can tell you that we'll, what we will be doing is continuing to speak directly to the American people about our policies to create jobs, grow the economy, and strengthen the middle class. Uh, we believe that the President's policies and the policies pushed by Democrats here in the Senate have been harmful to the American people. Uh, we believe there's a better way. And we will start by taking up these bills, many of which have languished on Harry Reid's desk, passed by the House of Representatives, that are conducive to creating jobs and growing our economy. We will work very hard to protect the American people from government overreach in so many areas where it's adding significant burdens to our economy and making it more expensive and more difficult to create jobs. And we will draw contrasts uh, with the Democrats in areas where uh, we believe there is a different direction, a better direction for the American people. And we'll talk uh, very directly, as I said, to the American people about those differences. But we hope that the President and the Democrats will work with us. It's going to be up to them. The ball's going to be in their court. Uh, obviously, uh, we're pleased to have an opportunity to serve as a majority here in the United States Senate. And um, we look forward to, uh, hopefully, bipartisan cooperation because uh, we think that it's in the country's best interest for us to get not only the Senate working again, but get, to get the Washington, D.C. and the people's government working again for the American people. And I also want to thank my colleagues for giving me the opportunity to continue as chairman of the Republican Policy Committee. Uh, we are committed to policies that uh, are going to put Americans back to work, focus on jobs, the economy, affordable energy, affordable health care. Uh, there are many bills that have passed in a bipartisan way um, in the House with a significant number of Democrats also on board. Those are the things we're going to work to try to passed through the United States Senate. We've heard the message loud and clear from the voters, uh, and that is that, uh, that we've now been given an opportunity to help try to change the direction of the country. I believe that that's not just an opportunity, but an obligation, and we are focused and committed to uh, focus on the economy, as well as getting people back to work, strengthening the middle class. Well, joining in what my colleagues have said, there's a lot of work out there to be done. I'm optimistic we have uh, the rules of the Senate that allows us to do it, if you'll just follow those rules. I'm also uh, optimistic that there are a lot of things beyond the Keystone Pipeline uh, that there's tremendous agreement on if we could just get to that work. Uh, and I believe the new majority leader is absolutely committed to see that we get this work done. Lots of legislation, as Senator Brasso just said, uh, for uh, more American energy, for things that produce good jobs, that take um, care of families in ways that family would like, families would like to be able uh, to take care of themselves. And, you know, frankly, the president's going to engage one way or another. The last four years, uh, not much reason for the president to engage with the Senate or the Congress. Uh, in the next two years, he'll either have to engage the day the bill winds up on his desk. At that point, his choice is to sign it or veto it. 
or decided to engage earlier in a way that we might be able to do hard things together. I think the American people have sent a clear sign. They, they want the government to do what the government's supposed to do and do it better than it's been doing it, and they want the government to get out of the things that they could do better for themselves. That's a challenge uh, for this Congress and this president. Uh, I hope the president decides that now that this is a good time, uh, a divided government to do hard things, and we need to get those hard things out of the way so that uh, we're going to see more good private sector jobs that provide good take-home pay for families. Well, let me begin by uh, reiterating what I've been telling my colleagues uh, the last hour or so. I very much appreciate the uh, opportunity to represent the Republican Conference in the uh, 2016 campaign. Uh, I also want to uh, congratulate Dean Heller uh, for uh, a gentlemanly, uh, friendly campaign. Uh, we made it clear, Dean and I, all along that this was uh, uh, a race between friends, uh, a contest decided among friends, and uh, we began it and, and ended it that way. So I congratulate him uh, on a very fine race. I also want to congratulate uh, Jerry Moran and Rob Portman for the wonderful th job they did leading this committee uh, over the last two years. Uh, uh, let me just say, we're determined that uh, we build on the success we had in 2014 for the 2016 cycle. Uh, that includes uh, protecting our 24 incumbents, increasing our majority, and uh, making it possible to elect a Republican president in 2016. Uh, the, the, the American people sent a message, a strong message, uh, with, uh, with a huge swing in, in the United States Senate. Listening to that message begins with good government in the United States Senate. And so I, I'm so pleased with uh, the agenda that Leader McConnell set out today. The American people want us to return to regular order, to bring up issues of concern to them, to protect minority rights as they have not been protected over the last several years, and to send to the President of the United States and enact into law changes that benefit uh, the American middle class and American family. So, uh, winning in 2016 begins with good government, with good legislation, and I'm glad to be part of this team for that reason. Leader McConnell, yep. will you be able to follow through with your pledge to have uh, no government shutdown if the President goes ahead with this executive order? So many Republicans are saying this spending bill should be uh, tied up on this. Do yeah, you yeah we'll, we'll not be shutting the government down, threatening to default on the national debt. Will not be shutting the government down or threatening to default on the national debt. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Well, I think what he said, I think you all have all uh, heard the definition of a Washington gaffe when a politician mistakenly tells you what he really thinks. Uh, we were subjected during the Obamacare debate to a whole lot of stuff that we all knew was not true, not even close to true. And what this insider saying confirms that they were spinning tails from beginning to end because they knew they couldn't tell the truth about Obamacare and have a chance of passing it, even with its Democratic Senate with 60 votes. So, um, look, the American people hate, detest, and despise Obamacare. Uh, all, virtually all of us would like to see it pulled out root and branch. We understand that the president obviously is not uh, sympathetic with that point of view, but we'll be voting on these uh, issues, but, but both the overall Obamacare uh, issue and the various pieces of it, like the individual mandate, the uh, medical device tax, and trying to restore the 40-hour work week. Senator McConnell, Senator McConnell. Yeah. Uh, you uh, talked about being disturbed by the President uh, proposing for immigration. What should Congress do on this uh, end of this Congress uh, to address this, and what should Congress do next year once we're <laughs> Well, what we've, what we've said is we hope the President isn't going to do that, uh, because there is a lot of interest among Republicans in both the House and the Senate 
in passing an immigration reform bill. Uh, I don't think there's anybody in our conference who doesn't think the current system is a mess and we'd like to improve it. Uh, the, the president has been told over and over and over again, and we're telling him again today, don't do this because his executive actions are not permanent changes. You know, they won't necessarily be there under the next president. If he really wants to improve the immigration system we have in this country, uh, he is stuck with a Congress <laughs> that he doesn't like. And, uh, you know, President Reagan never had the House in eight years. President Clinton didn't have the House or the Senate for six of their eight years. Uh, they understood that the American people had elected divided government. And um, we'd like for the president to recognize the reality that he has the government that he has, not the one that he wishes he had, and work with us to try to find a way to improve our immigration system. We'll let you know. Thank you.